So let's look at the first classification. We can be skeletal, class one, two, or three. And this is, I guess, similar to angle. Skeletal one is maxilla and mandible in good relationship to each other. But unless you do a Jefferson analysis, you won't know whether your skeletal one um, by skeletal protrusive, BP, or skeletal one normal, or skeletal one by skeletal retrusive, BR. Do you understand? So it's all right saying, oh yes, based on my wits, based on my stana, I have a class one patient. But if you have a class one patient who's back here, you're not gonna get a good looking face. You can be class one there, 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 okay? It's important to be class one with maxilla in the right position. Does that make sense to people? What you should be doing in your children when they're young, developing their upper jaw to its maximum genetic potential. We covered that, Schwartz Steiner, uh, sorry, Schwartz, um, Corkhouse analysis, um, uh, also uh, Ponce. Then position the maxilla, which is now the correct size, in its correct spatial relationship to the face. And that is in Bimbler factor one. That is in Jefferson ANS in relationship to the anterior arch. Skeletal two, now if you look at that diagram, the photo, you'd say, oh, that's a class two patient. But that could be a skeletal three jaw of someone who sucked their thumb. Can you see the difference? Okay, so don't assume what you see densely is also skeletal. This is where Jefferson's good, it subdivides the two. So I can have a dental class two relationship on a skeletal three jaw type A with the retrusive maxilla. See how much more accurate that is? So in class two, normally it's mandible retronasus, type two B, according to McNamara and Moyers, represents 80% of class two. Class three, in the same way, the more common class three is class 3A, maxilla retronasus. The one that needs surgery is the one where the mandible is too big and the maxilla is normal. Okay, so there are skeletal classifications. Our dental is interincisal angle. Division one, upper and lower incisors, normally form an angulation of about 130 degrees. And the upper incisor is torqued adequately. In Div 2 patients, the upper incisor is under torqued. And if the upper incisor is under torqued, it causes the interincisal angle to increase. In Division 3, which we call bidental protrusion, the upper and lower incisor angle is reduced because normally the upper incisor is proclined, over torqued. All right? So there's nine possibilities. Three dental divisions, three skeletal. Vertical, which we'll also learn from Jefferson via the vertical arc. You can have long face, like my friend on the left, neutral face, or short face. So this is a long face class two. This is a neutral face class three. This is a short face class two B, right? So now we have 27 possibilities. You can present a case to me saying, Dr. Mahoney, my patient is dental division two. On a skeletal class two jaw with a retronathic maxilla and mandible, and they are low angle brachycephalic. See how good that classification is? And the only thing missing then is growth remaining. And what I'd like to add to that classification, dental division two, skeletal class two B, retronathia with brachyfacial, so their growth is low, um, and they are at stage three, meaning that um, they're about to hit their ma maximum mandibular growth. So what is the Jefferson analysis? It's basically, a simplified Sassuni analysis. But it allows us to assess facial skeletal disharmony rather than just tooth position. Josh developed this in 1989. And um, if I just show you some, now, when you present a tracing to me, I really would like you to have the anterior arc in red and the vertical arc in green. So the two things that I look at rapidly, and sometimes I might look at 300 cases in one day. So it's really 
hard for me when you've just got a pencil tracing and lines everywhere. Look how clean this analysis is. I'm not interested in your cranial planes. You're using those for your ability to form the anterior arch. So what I'd like is the outline of the tracing in black, then the anterior arc in uh, red, and the vertical arcs in green. If you stick to that, it's a universal uh, method of tracing. So let's look at this patient. This patient has never had orthodontic treatment, but this patient would maybe fall in the category of some of those models I was talking about. Uh, and what is a, a thing? So at the end of this lecture, if I ask you, you know, define a beautiful face, you'll be able to say, a beautiful face will have maxilla in the right position to anterior cranial base, will have mandible in the correct position to the maxilla, will have the correct lower anterior face height, and will have four facial planes that all identically meet at center point O. Right? Now the proof in this pudding will be, I actually um, know the orthodontist who did the um, orthodontics uh, for Angela Jolie. So I'm desperately trying to get her lateral set. If anyone knows Angela personally, and uh, would like her, because uh, that would be just a fantastic article, right? It's essence of facial beauty, soft tissue, the new Eli, Angela Jolie. Cephalometrically, the Jeff's analysis where all her four um, facial planes come to center point out. Wouldn't, wouldn't that be good? It'd make uh, the public wake up and say, well, hang on, there is a way to find facial uh, uh, beauty. Um, so if we look at this girl, um, she's never had orthodontics. And you might look at her face and say, well, she's got no makeup, she hasn't done her hair. We're not talking about those intrinsic tattoos. We're talking about the essential uh, of you. So looking at her tracing, what do you see? ANS is pretty good on the anterior arc. Pagonian is pretty good forward point on the anterior arc. She is past the age of 18, so therefore her vertical should be on that lower line. Spot on, does that make sense? And if you trace her four planes, which are the cranial plane, the maxillary or palatal plane, the occlusal plane, and the mandibular plane, they almost reach one point perfectly. Does that make sense? So that is a good patient to start orthodontics for because genofacially she's good, right? But let me tell you, it's very rare we get patients who have perfect occlusion, perfect face. Does that make sense? They were more common in 100 years ago where people breastfed their children for two years, where people lived off the land, where people um, you know, didn't have all the uh, airway problems and concerns they have now. But certainly you can look at that as a guide. If you don't know what is ideal, you won't be able to predict what's non-ideal and how you treat it. So let's go through just by slides the Jefferson analysis before we do it by hand. All right, so the arcs I referred to, the arc I want in red is the anterior arc. We then have a age four vertical arc and an age 18 vertical arc. I want that in green. Forget about the 12-year-old arc at the moment because you can have a 10-year-old, 12-year-old, 15-year-old arc. I'll show you how you get that vertical measurement. But what I'd like to see is between, you know, beginning of facial growth and end of facial growth, where is that patient now? What you've got to understand, when a baby is born, they have a reduced lower anterior face height. Do you understand? Um, and um, uh, most faces are one-to-one. -one. And as they mature, you end up with a lower anterior face height being 55% off the total volume. So a four-year-old will have a different vertical to an 18-year-old. But if they're 20, 30, 50, it'll be the same as their 18-year-old arc. So what do I like about the Jefferson analysis? It's very easy to trace, as I said. And I think I saw that in his... Uh, there we go. I like that. Did he... Five minute analysis. It is, it generally is. And it treats to a beautiful face, healthy TMJ. How do I predict someone who has jaw problems? Skeletal class two, B, um, 
low angle with biskeletal retrusion. I guarantee you that patient will have PMJ problems or um, you know, some form of myalgia. So you can actually use this to have a look at uh, uh, not just aesthetics, but also functional um, benefits.